guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. It's another Scorcher. Today, I'm going to be working on my very first two-stroke lawnmower. I've never had a two-stroke lawnmower before. This is absolutely my first one ever. Yes, I know. Thinking about the hundreds of machines that I've had over the past three years or so, this is actually the first two-stroke. Unbelievable. This is essentially the same thing as that Lawn Boy, the green one that has the offset wheels to the side um, that the landscapers use a lot, you know, at least they used to, you know, all the time. So uh, I got this from my friend Mike Lynch, the guy that, uh, who, you know, gave me his uh, power washer to fix. I fixed it. I did a video on it. He watched the video. He didn't want it anymore because it was a lack of power. And then uh, I got another power washer and I fixed that one and gave it to him just because I'm such a nice guy. Anyway, he's uh, happier than a clam. Uh, but he found this at his mother's garage while helping her clean it out. And she, he thought that this would make a good project for me. Um, he has no idea what's wrong with it. Um, other than I think from just what I see, the primer bulb is done! I mean, it's cracked and stuff, but I almost feel like it has a look like some air you know so it's not like that's uh, I guess it's on its last leg but let's see if we can try to you know get this thing going today it's it's absolutely cool and I hear this is worth a lot of money you know uh, I've actually heard somebody say that they sold one of these things online for 350 on eBay and it wasn't running therefore this isn't running and it's complete could this be worth 350? We'll find out. I'm gonna bring this into the garage and work on it because it's absolutely scorching hot. I'm trying the video today without my lavalier because some subscribers say that the lavalier sometimes is so loud that it vibrates, you know, distortion on the sound. So I'm just using my shotgun mic that's on my uh, tripod right now. Step into my office. Why? Because you're freaking fired. Seven minute abs. What's that from? So looking at it on this side, it has one of these uh, recoil starters that is on the top. Feels like it has decent compression. Different though, different compression, you know? Feels different. You can see the primer bulb here is cracked, wilted. There's an on and off switch, see? So that controls the magneto kill wire to the magneto. It doesn't have a bail handle at all. Um, while removing this gas cap, there's liquid in there, clear liquid. It's water, that's not good. Looks like I might have to take off this entire cowling over here. Oh, there's a, there's a fuel shutoff, open and closed. It's open. Speed. How about that? Throttle speed with a knob? Pretty cool. Anyway, I'm going to take this cover off and see what we find. A view from the other side will show the offset wheel over here with a height adjuster, right? This apparently is a um, cover for the bagger. You could take off this plastic cover, which is, and by the way, in good shape, and put one of those covers on that attaches a bag on there, I'm assuming. Because this doesn't look like you can add anything here, but then how would you stop it? How would you stop the air from going there? Maybe there the attachment on here has a cover that covers that, maybe, I'm not sure. But uh, you could take it off with a wing nut over here. So the International Harvester was purchased by Cup Cadet, which is why they still keep the Cup Cadet colors. Um, just for you enthusiasts, uh, it's tough to make this out. Looks like it's model 3322. And I can't make out what year it was made, but it's International Harvester Company, Chicago, Illinois. Shout out to James Strumpler of Kansasville, Wisconsin, for buying 
all three types of my stickers. Thanks, buddy, for the support. So that hunk of junk uh, phone that I bought, Samsung S7 Edge with a bad screen. Well, now the screen doesn't come on anymore, so like right now, just stop. So I'm using my iPhone now. Just remove the six uh, Phillips screws on the side here, on the back. Let's see if we can just take this off. Repull a starter. It's probably have to come out this way. Wow, it's a teeny tiny gas tank. Look at that. Look how small that is. Small fuel line. Thin diameter. Has a side recoil uh, discharge. I'm sorry, side recoil starter. I actually have one of these in the back, so if this goes bad, I can always change it. And this primer bulb, if you look at it, it is cracked. It has a hole in it. Look. I just made it bigger. Just to show you. But I believe I might have another one. I'm going to go in the back and see if I have that recoil starter cover from another Tecumseh, it's similar setup to that. Similar but not the same, but maybe I could use the recoils, um, the primer bulb. In the meantime, I'm going to disconnect this and dump that water out. It's got some water, not a whole lot. So I've got the engine cover and gas tank out there drying a little bit in the sun since I'm not ready for it yet. And I'm gonna to try to replace this uh, primer bulb first. I have this one here. It's from a Sears Craftsman, super old Tecumseh. If you'll notice, primer bulb is in excellent condition, but it defers a little bit from that one. It looks a little different, but as long as you're getting air through it, it should be okay. And that one's Dunsky. There's a little nut on the bottom of the nozzle for where this primer bulb goes. Looks like it's a 3 8 Let me pull this hose out. And it's really brittle, you know? So I want to try to get it out without breaking it. Because I don't know if I have. Oh, there we go. So the hose is out, and I'm just untwisting the nut off the plastic. And here it is. That's what it looks like. It's not a true nut. You're a nut. Now I'm going to remove the, I'll try to remove the primer bulb out of here. As you can see there's, there's no nut or anything. I don't know how it comes off. So it's not a screw, right? You basically just take some channel locks and pinch it. There we go. As you can see this is like the side recoil like that one. It's a little different. I've had this uh, for sale on eBay for like a year. Not even a bite. Apparently it's rare. <laughs> so rare that nobody knows what it is. It's a good primer bulb though. Now, how am I going to fabricate this onto here? Because this has a this has a 90 degree angle nozzle and that one doesn't. See? Not to mention the fact that it may not even fit on the cover, you know. 
this may have to just sit on the cover right like that and then just run the, the tube through it so just temporarily I'm gonna just attach this primer to this hose I might have to extend this hose later but I just want to do this to test so it can at least prime Okay, here is the air cleaner I gather. Doesn't come off. It's just part of it. Wow. Because I've never worked on this style Tecumseh before. Ever. So... I think I should blow some crap in there, you know, some go go juice, prime it, or that's priming it, and then give it a couple pulls to see if we have spark, you know? I doubt it. It might be a points magneto, which would mean I'm screwed. Yes, I realize it's a uh, two stroke. I'm gonna just shoot a little squirt of uh, contact cleaner in there, with the same thing as carb cleaner. For my friends over at Lucas Oil. I don't think it'll start. What do you guys think? Place foot here when starting. Put my foot here because at least uh, this mechanism here will block a blade flying out and taking my legs out. Maybe. Not even a sputter. Yep, this is going to take a while, I think. I'm going to remove the spark plug and see if we have any spark. So I just checked for spark, and believe it or not, it had some spark. I saw it. Um, it was tough for me to video that because I couldn't video and test it at the same time. It was just difficult. Couldn't see it anyway. I barely saw it. So I'm just going to try some go-go juice again. And I had to look at this knob, you know. This is the on-off knob. I believe I had it off. <laughs> Give it a try now. Oh, oh, oh! You heard it? Oh, oh, oh! Woohoo! Awesome! Man, that's awesome. Turn it over. Uh, should I just try to put some gas in there and see if it'll uh, run? Or should I take the carburetor apart? It looks like there's very little clearance at all. I'd have to remove the entire uh, manifold just to get to the bowl. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of crap in there, but I don't want to open up another can of worms by taking the manifold off and destroying the gaskets. I don't know, man. I think I'm just going to try putting some two-stroke oil inside gas in into the tank and just trying to start it. I think I'm gonna try that. I just put the cover on through here. No primer bulb. Primer bulb was over here on the bottom over here, just to test. Put this thing through there. I uh, used a rag with a long forceps. Sprawled it around to wipe away any desbris. That's more than enough. Two stroke. Probably a 50 to one or 40 to one ratio. And I like to see like a blue sky type of hue is all you need. Some people put uh, too much two stroke oil in there and it's like black, you know what I mean? And you don't need black, you just need like a, a bluish hue is all. At least that's my experience. So, uh, has gas in it. 
surprised it's not leaking. I can hear sounds, but I don't hear any liquid. And is that wet from before or is it wet from now? You know? I can't tell. I'm going to try to pull, pull start it a few times. So you know what? I just took off this primer bulb, blew some into the primer and out came some water. So I think there's water in the carburetor. I might have to take the carburetor off after all. longest it's ever ran. I'm gonna have to remove the carburetor. There's two slotted sprues take off the air base. Like so. As you can see the water you can tell it's water because it uh, moves faster. So here's what the uh, carburetor looks like. I'm going to try and take it off via the one, two, three, I believe four screws right off the engine block. I guess it's called the intake manifold for them. I've loosened the four uh, Phillips screws that hold the carburetor onto the engine block. And I have to break the gasket seal. God knows how long it's been in here. And the linkage is in my way. Four screws. I'm gonna break the seal. Ooh, that was easy. Okay, it's hanging on to a linkage right here. Pull the thing down. Uh oh. Huh. That's unusual, isn't it? Where does that go? Oh man, I don't know how that went. fuel line, it's no hose clamps. I have a gas tank on its side so no gas is getting to it. So here it is, here's the uh, carburetor. Feels like a plastic bowl and there was some fuel leaking out of this nut here. Uh, you know what this nut is? This nut is a uh, a drain, see? Seems to work okay. It was a little leak. If you move it around, it might get moist. Oh, that makes me moist! Here's the throttle. I don't know how that throttle linkage went back in there. Here's the um, fuel adjustment screw. I'm not going to screw with that. <laughs> because I don't know how it goes, see? And if it... It seemed like it ran okay when you know, the, the second or two it was running, so I'm not going to mess with that screw, but next step is to remove this bowl and check out how much crud is in there, and then I'll have to figure out how that linkage went in there. See how it's just straight like that? That's very unusual. It almost looks like it's broken. That would suck if it was broken, huh? 
Unless you guys are probably going, Henry, it's like that. I've done that a million times. You know who does uh, two-stroke stuff a lot? My friend Five Speed Ash. He does a lot of two-stroke stuff. Huh. Where did this go? Is this? Kinda cool. Uh, that, did it go like that? Or like this? You know, it's definitely in out like that. Slotted screws to get the bowl off. Pretty easy to turn. What are the chances that I need a gasket kit for this? Am I going to go buy it? No. I'm just doing this for the hell of it. I have no interest in two stroke engines, no interest in this old vintage mower at all none i'm just doing it for the video content because uh personally i don't think this is worth any money and when i mean any money i mean significant amount of money i don't like working on old machines which is another reason why jamal alatet has been on the back burner i mean it literally is on the bottom of the queue of things to be repaired every time I get something. I almost hope that I get something so that I could repair that before the Jamal Altet. All right. This gasket actually looks like it's okay. I just don't remember how it went. <laughs> See that? I mean, you could kind of match it up like a puzzle, you know? Probably like that. I'll figure it out. Go back to the videotape, even though we don't use any tape. Whoa, you know, not that dirty. Some oil buildup on the bottom, which is probably causing it to leak because there's some oil gathered up around the gasket area. And this gasket is not bad either. And while this float bowl looks terrible, that's the way it looks. You know, the old ones, it looks like a cork. I'm almost scared to take this needle out because, like I said, I've never done this before. I'm a newbie to this two-stroke stuff. You know, looks okay. I don't see anything wrong with it. Other than the fact that I can't put this back on now. All right. Just want to do a blow test. Can't do the blow test without taking it apart. You know what? I'm gonna just clean it out then. Cause I had it out. Contact cleaner from Lucas Oil. It does not blow up gaskets, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. Um. I believe there's a seat in there. As you can see, it's clear. There's a jet here for the emulsion tube. And it's clear. Primer mechanism. See how it comes out that uh, fuel mixture hole? for the primer. Other than that, it looks pretty simple, huh? Should I take this fuel mixture screw out? One, two, three, okay, three. Three and it stops, so there's about three. There's no jet in there. You know how it's supposed to have like a little needle that sticks out? There's no needle. I wonder if that does anything. Hmm. How come that doesn't come out? Oh, I see it. You saw it? I saw it. Hmm. 
to screw this all the way back in until you can't go anymore. Like that, then three, right? Three turns. One, two, three. So that should have been exactly where I left it. There's a little nut here. Should I mess with it? You know what? It's three eighths. I'm gonna turn it a little. If it doesn't go easily, which it did, it's gonna say if it didn't move, I wasn't gonna mess with it. Cool. And it's clear. Yeah, that's clear. So honestly, there's no reason why this doesn't work. Tecumseh is very tricky. They hide little holes all over the place. And I don't know enough about it to... I'm going to have to study this one and see if there's a hidden hole somewhere. I don't know if there's a lot of videos on this uh, machine. I wanted to show you guys something interesting that I've never seen before. Then again, I've never worked on a two-stroke uh, lawnmower before. But um, look, on the back plate into the engine block, look at that. There's a couple of check valves. Isn't that cool? Almost like an air compressor, you know? Anyway, so I cleaned out everything, all the holes. This this emulsion jet nut here I took out. It was clear. The seat is clear. The primer holes are clear. The gasket's in decent shape. I think there was just some water in there is all. This is for the fuel. This is for the primer hose. Here's the throttle. Springs back into place well. It should run. I mean, it's in decent shape. You know, I don't know if it's been serviced, you know, since it was purchased. I mean, I'm assuming it, it would have been. But I got to figure out where that linkage goes. You know, that flat linkage, the throttle linkage that goes up like that. I got to figure out where that goes. So I put it all together again. Uh, didn't put the screws on the thing yet. The primer bulb is through here, but it pops up a little. Put the carburetor back again. I adjusted the needle. Uh, now I could actually feel um, fluid going to the carburetor on gas. what I was doing here this is uh, the speed control light and normal and I was just pulling it and it pulled out completely that's not supposed to happen and look on this side here it's also like cut off I guess it's supposed to go inside and push something but honestly it was running all right without it weird setup man I've never seen this ever before I'll have to figure out how this attaches. So it had a couple of bolts that broke off this bracket. Uh, the bracket bent. 7 16 bolts and the bracket just came loose. So I'm going to put a couple of washers in between. Try to hold it on.
You're just feeling for the holes because you can't see it unless you're like lying down or something. All in all, this has been very interesting, no doubt. I mean, uh, I've never worked on anything like this before, and uh, it's definitely something new to me. Anyway, I'll try to get this back together again. Hopefully the throttle will work. All right, I just put the uh, throttle bracket back on. Let's see if it works. Can you believe what just happened? Holy cow. I'm amazed, fellas. I didn't think I'd actually get this thing going, but uh, I'm pretty impressed. It was uh, definitely an interesting learning experience, right? And um, man, for it to to be able to start like that and run at uh, regular RPMs, as you saw that little throttle knob, it had like a Z-bend that went inside. So when you turned it, the Z-bend went like this. Turn it back, the Z-bend went like that. So it does something to the governor linkage on the inside of the engine. And uh, we changed the primer bulb and cleaned the carburetor. And uh, man, oh man, it, uh, it runs with a couple of pulls, you know what I mean? and at uh, the normal RPMs is what it sounds like. So this was my uh, International Harvester, my very first one, uh, my very first two-stroke lawnmower. And uh, I mean, it was kind of a pain in the butt to work on, you know what I mean? Especially with 95 degree heat, you know, and uh, it's not comfortable, you know, but uh, I didn't think I would get this going, to be honest with you, and it didn't really take all that long. It was very interesting to understand the linkages on the inside and how everything worked. I did replace the uh, primer hose because it was too short and very hard and brittle, so I swapped it to a longer one. And of course that primer bulb sticks up a little, but unless I want to cut the bracket on the bottom that holds the um, engine cover in place, the plastic shroud, um, I think it would vibrate 
in the front because there's, there's only two two screws on the sides and two in the back there's nothing on the front so if I took that bracket off or cut it I think this uh, left front area would vibrate a lot and cause it to sound terrible you know so I'm just gonna leave that primer bulb sticking up like that whatever uh, I'll take a couple pictures of this thing and uh, list it for 400 just to test the waters you know I know no way right but you watch maybe some nut will go oh my god is that an international harvester slash cub cadet slash lawn boy commercial landscaping lawnmower in decent condition runs and starts and everything and mows I want it you know maybe or I'll sell it for 50 bucks um, it has a magnesium deck it says magnesium on it. but uh, it was uh, interesting to get it going and uh, I don't think I want to do any more of these but it's a little bit different than what I'm used to you know usually I'm doing lawn tractors and I've been doing that for a, a month or so with a couple of push mowers here and there you know but uh, I'm glad to get this thing out of the way we'll see you guys next time on mowers and blowers